particular uh, workshop is to make things easy. To give you a framework that once you understand the parameters, the outliers, the extremes, so to speak, that you can look at any interaction between one or more human beings and extrapolate exactly what's probably going on. Does that make sense? Right? It's not, I'm not going to teach you every little nook and cranny, every little micro-expression. First of all, if you're, if you're coming in here looking for information on micro-expressions, no. For most, the average human being, micro-expressions, how many people know what the hell I'm, I mean when I say a micro-expression? Okay. If you haven't, you should read up all of Paul Ekman's work. Uh, a lot of his, his material that I'm, I'm working from, I pull from his work. I'm a very big fan of his. Micro-expressions, by and large, are far too subtle for the average untrained person to catch, consciously. But there are much larger behavioral processes that, if we look, we can look and, and you, know, you have the perfect laboratory right now to apply what we learned in our last training, which is the speed attraction, uh, three magic questions process. Right? Matter of fact, I have guys in here who were telling me last night when they were walking the strip doing walk-up hypnosis and all these other things, they were using three magic questions protocol and they had mobs of people following them up and down the street. Right? Because the three magic questions protocol will generate that kind of comfort very, very quickly. Comfort and discomfort are two of the big things that we need to look at when we start to work with body language. Okay? Um, you know you have three brains, right? And it's not the one you're thinking of, men, although it's connected, right? Let me put my little sigil up here. I always, every time people see this, they go, what is that? I say, that's for me to know and you to find out, right? Uh, I guess it's officially start time, right? Okay. Welcome to Bob, uh, People Reading for Fun and Profit, a.k.a. Body Language Secrets. My name is David Snyder, and today we're going to do a deep dive into the wonderful world of nonverbal influence. Um, my intention is, again, once to, to show you a framework with which you can organize everything you, you see and understand about body language okay? and other types of non-linguistic phenomena. Tonality we would consider also nonverbal. Right? Tonality aside from the actual physical body you're walking around in, is the single biggest hypnotic operator that you have. Okay? Your tonality will change everything. The fastest way to change your tonality congruently, that's a big word. When we get into the lie detection segment on Sunday, you're going to hear that a lot because that is how you catch liars. You have to look almost exclusively for the incongruity, the things that don't line up. So on one side, I'm teaching you how to be completely congruent no matter what you're doing. On the other side, I'm teaching you how to spot people who aren't. Okay? Everything that human beings do, every behavior they generate, every belief that they have, comes down to one thing. Feelings. Feelings. <laughs> Nothing more than... Seriously, body feelings, though. All of our behaviors... All of our beliefs are in, in response to something we either want more of or a feeling that we want a whole lot less of. All of your clients who come in are there because of a feeling they don't like, right? And there's a feeling they want more of. All of our behaviors are geared this way. At the reptilian level or the paleocortex level, which is the oldest part of you, it runs the meat. Your paleocortex thinks in primal drives. Okay? As far as it's concerned, and if, I, and if I lapse into jargon, smack me. So I'm trying to keep this... By the way, the single biggest way to, to keep people with you is to use smaller words. Right? Look at... Never mind, I won't even mention his name. But your reptile brain sorts for what is familiar. Okay? It's pleasure driven. And it's looking for friends. Now, if it's familiar, it's good. If it's pleasurable, it's good. If it's friendly, it's good. We move towards those things. This is true at every level of human neurology, every level of human experience. Okay? Conversely, of course, if it's unfamiliar, it's 
bad. Right? If it's painful, unless you're in San Francisco or some weird fetish community, it's bad. Right? If it's unfriendly, it's bad. Human beings always, pretty much without exception, in spite of what NLP training may have taught you, human beings almost always move away from pain and towards pleasure. The distinction is which do they do first, right? <clears throat> if you have, I need, I need two human beings for this. Sure. Come on up here, human being. Come on up here, human being. And it's great. It's a man and a woman, so we have the perfect mating context. Oh. I'm not into dudes. You're not into mating? <laughs> we can fix that, I too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's all right then. All right, so what I'm going to share with you uh, is, again, these are, this is the world according to David. If what I say conflicts or it does not resonate with something that you've, you've accepted is true, tough shit. Um, <laughs> no, if it, if it works, use it. Right? Uh, I, how many people have never been in a workshop with me? Just by raising your hands. Okay, very cool. Let me just give you my disclaimer really, really quick. If politically incorrect metaphors, colorful, colorful language, profanity, or the word boobies offends you, there's the fucking door. <laughs> right? um, I'm, I, I really believe in just cutting through the BS and to give you real world practical things that you can learn right now and go out and start using it. Right? And you'll be able to start using this today, right now. The moment you walk out of this room, you'll be able to look at any group of people and know who's the, who's the prize, who's the seeker, who's the rapport leader, who's following who. And once you know how to do that, you can control it. You can influence it. Okay? Massive, massive skill to have. I'll also show you some body language tweaks, things that you can do with your body that will automatically generate trust in other people. I'll also show you how to flirt. <laughs> Oddly enough. I won't give you my pedigree because they've only given me 50 minutes. So let's start by establishing, let's start by establishing that the reptile brain, which is controlling the meat suit, that's my slang term, I watch way too much Supernatural, right? controls everything that these people do, consciously and unconsciously. All right? they, if, you, if you want to reference embodied cognition studies or um, um, object relations theory, you'll find the analogs for what I'm talking about. But here's how it works. What's your name, sir? Rick. Rick, place back to me over here. Move over here a little bit. Jules, back here. Okay. What you see here is the, the outliers of the rapport continuum. We're talking about connection. We're talking about rapport. We're talking about away from. These are two people who have absolutely no connection to one another moving away. That is the outlier for the rapport continuum. Follow me? That's our parameter. This is what we don't want. Things are starting to evolve. Let's bring Rick up. Rick, nicely. We'll bring up Rick up nicely. We'll be jewels up loving together. Almost pee-pee touching. There you go. This is what we call the other end of the rapport spectrum, where one plus one equals three. All right? Thank you. Back up a little bit. Don't get so intimate in my place, damn it. This is where all social interactions fall. Every form of interaction between one person and another, or a group, within a group, are going to fall within that spectrum. They're either going to be more oriented towards sameness or more oriented towards away from or difference. Everything you see can be extrapolated from those two extremes. Does that make sense? Now, the two big outliers, Rick, can back up just a little bit here again. The two big outliers in this process are distance and orientation. When they orient ventral line to ventral line, they're in more in rapport. When they orient away from, they're less in rapport. The common dating dynamic looks something like this. If Jules is sitting at the bar, she's like this. Does this look familiar? <laughs> now, based on what we just learned, based on what we've just learned, who has more power? Why? Who's more invested in this relationship? Remember, attention, which is often equivalent to direction of focus, is the currency of relationships. The reptile brain, even regardless of how erudite and logical you think you are, is always running the show. It just sublimates its primal drives with rationales and emotions. OK? 
Okay? So, in this dynamic, if, <clears throat> if Rick is making an approach, he has some, she has something he wants, but it could just as easily be this, which we almost never see. Well, actually, the men almost never see. 60% of all approaches are initiated by women. Didn't know that, did you? But you see, women are much more cagey than we are, men. We're stupid. Okay? The women are going... Right? Why? Because a woman's social radar, a woman's socialization and her sensory acuity is far more finely tuned to subtle social and nonverbal dynamics. When you get a, woman, a group of women together, and, a, and one guy, right? Every woman knows in the group when the conversation's over and they're gone. The guy's like, I'm fucking alone, right? This is also, and again, I'm gonna actually, uh, Kelly Woods asked me to sit in on a, uh, a panel tomorrow that she's holding on some of the things going on here at the convention in terms of people being approached when it wasn't wanted and things like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my input on some of those things. One of the gaps in female socialization, by the way, is the inability to extract themselves from an interaction that's going south without going from nice girl to bitch mode. There's no in-between. Right? See, guys, we're terrified of the approach. It's not so much with women. What's, ha- what's going on with women is we're fra- they're afraid... I said, wait, my sex change is coming in. Right? <laughs> what they're afraid of, guys, is that they're, you're not going to get the message when, the, rela- when the, the process isn't going where you want it to go. And they don't have those subtler areas between all the, all the signals that a woman would recognize versus what a man would recognize. Because guys, our, we're, we're completely different in terms of what we sort for. All right? A woman can literally go up to a man and go, and a man would go, wonder what she meant by that. <laughs> right? Women, not so much. All right? But the problem is, is that both of you are projecting your internal map of the world onto the opposite gender, and when they don't match, you make them wrong. You see, the, the signs that women are sending out are obvious to women, but not to men. The signs that men send out are way obvious to women, but they're too blatant. They're not subtle enough to not be threatening. You follow me? Guys, we beat it over the head, we take it home and we eat it. Sometimes not in that order. Right? Right? Remember, painful, unfriendly, bad, reptile moves away. Right? If what you're presenting doesn't fit the map of the person receiving, that's the response that you get. That is the unconscious response that you get. Does that make sense? So now, in the relationship dynamic we've got, Jules is the prize, Rick is the seeker. Ideally, if we have time, we can go through the seven stages of mating if you want, but... It, it's, it's every social dynamic you're going to work with, whether it's a negotiation, whether it's a mediation, a client, uh, hypnotist interaction, is going to fall in this paradigm. How many, how many of us, when we, when we work with our clients, are here? Mm-hmm. Right? A better angle to be is here. Because when we align, we align. If we align somatically, we align emotionally. When we align emotionally, we align cognitively. If you ever watch some of the best people in the world, uh, like the best guy I can think of right now in terms of doing this is a guy named Apollo Robbins. He actually performs here in uh, Las Vegas. He's a pickpocket. He's a professional. He gets up on stage and picks people's pockets. Great job, right? <laughs> but Apollo did a, did a show called Brain Games. And he talked about how people's attention can be easily diverted, allowing you to move into their personal space. So if I'm approaching Jules and I look down and I walk in, I can walk right into her personal space <laughs> and it's, it's, it's actually quite natural, right? Because once we make eye contact, she'll fall, her attention will follow where I go and I can slip in. I don't come in, I don't come in directly. I, I, I'm on an approach vector, I look down, I slip around that point of contact and now I'm in, mm-hmm. right? When you're approaching people on the street for your street hypnosis, don't approach them straight on. Come at them from a side vector. This is peripheral influence. And as you do, align yourself ventrally with where they're going. The neurology always seeks alliance. It happens on every level of human experience. Understand? Okay? So, this is what I mean when I say this is the outlier. 
If we understand that this is where all body language positioning comes in, we can look at a group dynamic and extrapolate based on what we know is true. You don't need to know every single gesture. And this is true for every human being on the planet. You can be in New Guinea, you can be in Africa, you can be in Italy, you can be in, in uh, Alaska, it won't matter. Right? Spatial, social distances can change. Orientations don't. Mm -hmm. Orientations don't. Okay? It's hardwired into us. So, uh, thank you Rick, thank you Jules, give them a big round of applause. What you see in the continuum is that as people move towards connection, they move towards pleasure. They move towards pleasure. Now, I talked about ventral orientation. That's the, front, the frontal line. The more oriented towards each other they are, the more connected they are, the more trusting they are. Okay? It'll almost never start there, though. Does that make sense? Okay. When you approach... And again, this, this carries into anything, any kind of cold call, any kind of cold walk up, whether you're doing uh, uh, networking, a lot of you guys are in BNA, BNI and all these other networking groups, you do speaking, uh, you, you talk to groups, a lot of you like to do the street hypnosis, the walk ups where you start talking to people. Remember the approach vectors that you take and the orientation that you take on will change how people process you in their world. Your physiological proxemic position around their body will change their psychological positioning. It's embodied cognition, neuroscience, can't not happen. If you want people to like you more, if they're right hand dominant, stand on their right side. They'll like you more. Okay. <clears throat> when we start looking at interpreting body language, everybody here, anybody here not have a face? Raise your hands if you don't have a face. Okay. <laughs> Raise your hands if you have a face. All right, very cool. Here's the thing we need to understand. We are, we are hardwired for facial recognition. We're hardwired to look people in the eyes and study the face. We'll cover this more in lie detection. That is the last place we look for information as to what's going on. So if the face, which is the place we pay the most attention to, is in fact the most, is the least useful at this point, what do you think would be the most useful? 